Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome to another CBT Nuggets skill. In this skill, we are going to be exploring how you can set up your own self-managed cluster in Kubernetes with Kubernetes. And we're going to be using a tool known as Kube ADM or Kube Admin, depending on what your preference is in pronunciation, in order to set up that cluster. Now, before we get too deep into Kube ADM specifically, I wanted to kind of provide a overview of the landscape of utilities that you can use to set up a Kubernetes cluster. And this will give you a better understanding of where exactly Kube ADM fits into the picture. Now, there's really two primary different mechanisms that you can use to deploy a Kubernetes cluster if you need it. You can do something that is self-managed, as with all the options right down here in the bottom section, or you could use a major cloud vendor solution in order to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Most of the major cloud vendors out there, like Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud, DigitalOcean and Linode, all offer managed Kubernetes services. In Microsoft Azure, they call it Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS. And in AWS, they know it, they call it as uh, EKS or Elastic Kubernetes Service. Uh, they have a much longer name, which is a little bit more formal. I think it's Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, but that's just more of a formality. Most people know it as EKS. Uh, Google Cloud has their GKE engine that allows you to spin up a cluster. And then DigitalOcean and Linode both have their own managed Kubernetes offerings as well, which really fundamentally operate similarly to the big three cloud vendors. Now, what's really nice about these services is that it makes it very easy to spin up a cluster. So you don't really have to know anything about Kubernetes in order to use these managed services. As long as you have an account with those vendors, you can spin up a Kubernetes cluster and then immediately start using it. Also, they take care of doing things like handling automated upgrades of the cluster. So if you need to increment your Kubernetes version when a new release becomes available, then you can use that cloud vendor's upgrade path in order to manage that upgrade and kind of offload some of that process off to the cloud vendor. So you as an administrator don't have to do as much work to upgrade the cluster and then verify that everything's been upgraded correctly because that's part of the value that's offered by a managed Kubernetes service. Also, the cloud vendors such as Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, etc., offer built-in monitoring and logging of the Kubernetes masternodes. And this is really helpful because you don't need to worry about, as an administrator, going and hunting down log files on the file system. That can be a little bit of a pain if you are having to go out and troubleshoot a cluster. And so by using built-in monitoring and logging solutions, such as in AWS, they call it Amazon CloudWatch, you can benefit from having kind of a central place to go look for logs about your applications rather than having to go log into different virtual machines, all the different master nodes in your cluster, for example, and then hunt down those files on the file system and make sure that you're looking at the right data. So that's a value add with the major cloud vendors in terms of offering a managed Kubernetes service. We also have the ability to do scaled compute. So because we're not self-hosting the compute nodes that are part of our Kubernetes cluster, we're able to benefit from the scalability or what's known as the elasticity of the cloud. And what that essentially just means is that the cloud has free compute capacity that's inside of their data centers. And when you are ready to consume that compute capacity, you can simply provision it into your account and just basically take it out of their pool of compute capacity and then pay for the provisioned amount of compute capacity that you have. So if your application needs to scale up very rapidly, then it's really nice to be using a cloud vendor because then you can simply add more virtual machines, more worker nodes to your Kubernetes cluster, and you don't have to worry about purchasing hardware and installing operating systems, configuring low-level networking, installing device drivers, and just all of the complexities that come along with the traditional IT infrastructure configuration where you're responsible for that physical layer on up. Now, there are lots of other options that you have in the Kubernetes ecosystem to deploy a Kubernetes node. 
And some of those options have the names in their logos here. Some of the logos can be a little bit weird, like this one down here in the bottom left corner. Uh, that's actually K0S. Uh, you've also got uh, this option right here. This is the logo for, I believe it's Minikube. And Minikube is basically a, a command line tool that you can use to rapidly spin up a Kubernetes cluster. It gives you the ability to spin one up inside of a virtual machine or inside of a container or directly on a bare metal virtual machine, or sorry, bare metal uh, machine that you might have in your environment as well. Uh, K3S is actually really cool. I like K3S and I've toyed around with that in the past a little bit. It's a very lightweight distribution that comes packaged up as just a single binary. And so this makes it very easy to install because really all you have to do is copy this local binary to your system and then you can immediately start calling the different commands inside of K3S. It also makes it very easy to uh, you know set up the initial cluster and then run kube cuddle commands in order to administer the cluster. You've also got options like Rancher. So Rancher, you can kind of think of like a orchestrator of orchestrators. So it allows you to rapidly deploy Kubernetes clusters. They also have their own distribution of Kubernetes as well. Uh, I forget what the name of that is, but they do offer a, a, a distribution of Kubernetes that you can simply spin up yourself. Also, Kind is known as Kubernetes in Docker. And if you'd like to run a Kubernetes cluster as an array of Docker containers, you can do that as well. It's a really convenient option if you're looking to kind of isolate that cluster and then very e easily be able to tear it down and then rebuild it again so that you can very easily do rapid development on your environment. And you don't have to worry about spinning up an entirely new operating system every time to make sure that you're starting from a clean slate. By working with containers, you're actually helping to ensure that every time you spin it up, it's going to kind of start with this, a clean slate. One of the easiest ways to spin up a Kubernetes environment as well is Docker Desktop. And so if you're looking for just the kind of most straightforward option to create a Kubernetes cluster, you'll probably just want to install Docker Desktop on your dev system. Uh, Docker Desktop runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and you can actually run Kubernetes uh, directly inside of Docker Desktop. On um, uh, the Windows platform, for example, there's a little SysTray icon. You can just go down into that SysTray and then uh, kind of indicate that you want to go into Kubernetes mode, at which point uh, Docker Desktop will allow you to run kubectl commands against a cluster that it sets up itself. Also, uh, Ubuntu, the or Canonical, I should say, the makers of Ubuntu Linux have a distribution of Kubernetes known as Micro K8S. And depending on which distribution you choose here, you're going to be looking at different options that are available. You know, some distributions might have things like support for kubeflow or support for GPU compute inside of containers on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, other options might include authentication options that are available. Um, and also things like logging systems that are built in. Like if you, you might have a Fluent D agent that's built in to automate uh, the obtaining of logs so you can troubleshoot that cluster. So depending on which distribution of Kubernetes you choose, you'll have a different kind of combination of options there. Uh, but if you're looking for something really easy to get started, definitely recommend Docker Desktop. If you're looking for uh, just having a raw interface to run Kubernetes in containers, you probably want to look at Kind. If you're looking for something that's very simple and lightweight, K3S definitely takes the cake since it's just a single binary distribution. But we're actually going to be focusing on Kube ADM here, which is kind of the official tool from the Kubernetes uh, group that is basically administering Kubernetes itself as a project, that's kind of their official tool to set up a Kubernetes cluster. And so that's the one that we're going to be exploring. And in particular, we're going to be using Kube ADM on an Amazon Web Services EC2 instance in order to provide the virtual machine compute and virtual networking platform in order to create a cluster. So in any case, let's go ahead and jump into our next video where we'll actually take a look at the steps to install the Kube ADM utility. And then we'll take a look at some of the dependencies that you're going to need in order to create a Kubernetes cluster, things like your container runtime, as well as your container network interface as well. In this particular skill, we're going to be using a open source project out there known as Calico for our container networking. So let's go ahead and jump into our next video and start taking a look at Kube ADM itself. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.